Hi everyone and welcome back to Adrian's Digital Basement. On today's video, it's part two of the Macintosh Repair-a-thon. If you haven't seen part one already, I recommend you watch that first. So for today's video, I'm gonna finish taking apart the rest of the machines. I'm gonna use some WD-40 to clean up motherboards and I'm going to test out the power supplies. Let's get right to it. Next up we have machine number five. This is a Mac Classic. As you see, it has the hard drive in here, but things are looking really bad for this machine. I'd say there's gonna be no hope that this thing will ever work, and here's why. There, ladies and gentlemen, is what we have when one of those lithium batteries explodes. And that was in the middle of the motherboard. And if it did this much damage to the metal on the case, you know this motherboard is going to be beyond toast. Let's pull the neck board off here. It had a little bit of this goop on here. Just peel that off for next time. I will need to pull this expansion board out. Uh, this is a regular classic, right? This is a RAM expansion board. It's uh, got one meg of soldered RAM and two more SIM slots. So I guess this machine supported a total of four megabytes. Must be, oh yeah, there's a megabyte solder on the board, which I can see right there. Pull the hard drive off. Here is the power connector to the motherboard. Oh, there's like debris leaking all over the desk here. The motherboard should slide out, but it's stuck because of all of this corrosion over on this side. Let's put this on its end like that. This, this disaster here is causing the motherboard to be basically stuck sort of welded itself onto here. I think I just have to bend this, try to get it off. Oh boy, that's not good. Yeah, this is not good at all. <laughs> I think I freed it. Yeah, there we go. Oh man, <laughs> what, what the heck? I, this is beyond crazy. So the battery is just gone. Now you might think something leaked onto this, but look down here in the case. Here's the lithium battery and the holder. And I guess this was attached to the motherboard, I presume. I don't think there's any saving this motherboard, right? Here you can see the corrosion that's happened in the case because of that leaking battery. Oh, this motherboard on the other hand, this is insane. So there were some electrolytic caps. They're just, they're literally gone. So these silver caps have definitely leaked all over this motherboard. There's lots of corrosion around all of these electrolytic uh, surface mount caps. All these traces look, look damaged here. But over here, I can tell that there was actually a couple electrolytic components. They're just missing entirely. Yeah, this, this board I would say is gonna become a parts board. <laughs> like if I ever need one of these ICs or something for another machine, I can steal it off. At least this part of the board looks generally okay. I need to put this in some kind of a hazmat bag. Well, here's the Mac Classic 2 board after washing it, soaking it, and then letting it dry. There's definitely a lot of crap that's around these chip legs from these leaky capacitors. Luckily, the traces themselves don't look too damaged, but definitely there's a lot of corrosion there on the solder. And it's the same over in this area, just lots of corrosion around those legs. But the traces themselves seem potentially okay. Every electrolytic cap on this board definitely leaked. The battery leakage isn't so hot either. Hopefully the corrosion stayed inside the socket for the most part. The solder mask under there looks okay. We'll of course have to remove this to make sure. It's especially concerning on the CPU, lots of this corrosion around these legs here, although all the legs look completely intact. So of course, at the minimum, this board will need a recap before it could even possibly work. Now this board, if you can believe it, is the Mac Classic board with the horrible battery leakage. After removing it from the machine, I immediately soaked it in soap and water and gave it a physical scrubbing. I didn't shoot any video of that, but here's a photograph of how it looked after the scrubbing. 
A lot of the corrosion and the salts from the battery leakage came off the board, although it still looked really bad, especially around the legs on the ICs, and I don't know what all this white coating was all over the board. So because this board was most likely toast, I decided to take some WD-40 and spray it all over the board and let that soak in. And then I took a pick and I started scraping away at the leftover corrosion that was on the board. Now it's a little hard to see because all these bubbles, let me push them out of the way. You can see underneath here, there's a huge improvement. The WD-40 actually seems to be having some kind of an effect and I'm not sure if it's actually dissolving or loosening it, but it definitely is weakening the bond of that stuff to the board so I can scrape it away, say with the, the point of this pick here. Also interesting to me is there was a lot of green oxidization on this copper here, and the WD-40 seems to have made it much easier to get rid of that oxidization, and now we're seeing the bare copper underneath there. The same goes for this area over here as well if I try to move some of these bubbles away. This is where a couple of electrolytic capacitors were that just simply disappeared. And if I move the bubbles, you'll notice now you're just seeing the bare copper. So a lot of that corrosion and salts has sort of been washed away and now we're left with bare copper. And here underneath this is a solder mask has been removed and there's the copper under there. And the copper actually looks all right for the most part. Now it is hard to see on these ICs here with all the bubbles and the WD-40 on here, but it seems like a lot of that fuzz that was around the legs has also been removed. And we're left with the legs of these ICs being exposed as a copper color. This is the processor I'm wiping the pins on. And there was a lot of fuzz and corrosion on this and all that white stuff was around here. It seems like what we're seeing now are the actual legs of the processor and we're just seeing them as copper. So I think the legs are actually copper legs and they're plated in some kind of a tin coating. And it seems like the corrosion from the battery has actually removed the coating and it put all that fuzz on it. But now, now that it's washed away, we're actually seeing the copper underneath there. There's a lot of WD-40 floating on this board right now. And what's really fascinating to me is anywhere there was corrosion either from the battery or the electrolytes that leaked out of these surface mount caps, the WD-40 is all bubbled up. And this WD-40 has been sitting on here for hours. But in other areas of the board, like over here, where there was no corrosion whatsoever, the WD-40 is not bubbled up at all. It's just sort of a wet coating. But over here, if we look at these ICs and these pins, these were all corroded and covered in that electrolyte residue, just like we saw on the Mac Classic 2 board. So I'm not really sure if what's happening here is some kind of a chemical reaction between the WD-40 and that electrolyte that was on here, and if this is actually benefiting or helping in any way. But I'll be curious to let this sit for several more hours until the bubbles subside, and then wash away all the WD-40 and look at how things look underneath. I really didn't think this board was savable in any way, so this is more an experimentation than anything else. If I lift up the board here, you'll notice that it's pretty bad looking underneath as well. Look at all of this. So this is why I don't think it's dissolving the salts necessarily, but it looks like it's definitely dislodging them. There were some of these corrosion salts on the bottom of the board as well. So there is a lot of WD-40 there. So this board is sort of soaking in it on both sides. One other thing, so see here it says D1. That component was actually installed on there, but once I started soaking it in the WD-40, it actually came off and it is floating around on the board somewhere. I don't see it's underneath the bubbles right now, but it came off. Although, looking underneath, the copper pads don't seem too bad actually. There maybe is a break in the trace right there, but this has to do with the battery. This large copper exposed area here was one side of where the battery connected, so that really ate away at the solder mask. But this obviously was a diode for the battery in case you put it in backwards. This Motorola IC right here as well is also not really attached to the board anymore. It had a lot of corrosions around all four sides. I notice if I use the pick to kind of get underneath it, it's mostly disconnected, at least on three sides. So it's almost like the corrosion from the battery really ate away at the solder, but it didn't necessarily touch the copper itself. So maybe I can retin all the legs of this and actually get this chip reinstalled. Not quite sure about that. So I'm going to set aside this motherboard and just let this soak for several more hours and let's get to the other machines. Okay, here is machine number four. This is the one that works for the most part, except it has no audio and a sad Mac that pops up when you turn it on. This appears to be a four meg machine. It's got two SIMs installed in it. Funny that there was no adhesive holding this neck board on. So I'm having a problem with the SCSI cable. It's disintegrating on the main board here. I'm pulling up on it, which shouldn't pull up by the cable. 
There's really not any other way to get it off the motherboard. It seems to be stuck on the connector for some reason. I wonder if some corrosion did that. The floppy cable came off okay, so I'm just trying to prise this out of here using this flat blade screwdriver. Maybe my handy pick would do a better job. Let's see about that. Come on. Oh, it's moving. Just ever so slightly. Okay, well that came off. Never had a cable that was so stuck on before. Didn't break the connector, but this little cover came off. That's no big deal. All right, there we have it. There's the next classic motherboard. Let's get this battery out of here. So it hadn't leaked, that's nice. You can see by the dullness around the capacitors here that these capacitors haven't leaked nearly as badly as the other ones. So it hasn't really caused a ton of corrosion. Time to put this board in some soapy water for washing though. I wrote number four on this chip here just to keep these boards separate. I did write a five and a six on the other two boards just so I can keep them matched up to their appropriate chassis. And we have some soapy water here. In goes the board. So I've been checking all of these for screen burn and this one absolutely has some very minor screen burn. You can see the menu bar here, especially if I shine a bright light on it. Oh, my flashlight is dying. So I just update the note with any other issues. All right, let's move on to number three. Number three has intermittent PSU, no boot, and HD spins. This one has a good CRT. I don't see any screen burning at all. Maybe if there's any, it is extremely minor, not even worth noting. Let's get this sticky stuff off the neck board so I can pull this off. There we go, comes right off. Let's take out this RAM card. No memory installed. I see this one has a quantum hard drive installed. I wonder if this is a replacement for the original. Pull this scuzzy cable out. See, that one comes off as it should without any fighting. And the power connector, there we go. There's the board. The number three board has already had the battery removed. That wasn't me who did that. There is very minimal corrosion from the capacitors on this. So they have started leaking, but it's not terrible whatsoever. These caps have definitely been leaking. There is some corrosion, but it's relatively minor compared to some boards that I've seen. Although there are some corrosion traces right here and here. So this is the real-time clock area of the board. But yeah, that's not, that's not looking great right there. All right, so now it's time for a bath on that board as well. And I'll just give it a little bit of a scrub on, around the cap areas. Definitely some physical scrubbing goes a long way for getting rid of that fluffy corrosion and stuff that was on these traces over here. It doesn't mean that these traces are still gonna work. I, there might be a break there, but that's something you can bodge over. But scrubbing it with the toothbrush and soap and water allows you to be able to see you know, what you're dealing with. So this computer was one that had the intermittent power supply. And I'm curious if I power this up without the motherboard, what exactly happens? I plugged a hard drive into here. Let's just hit the power on this. Just, I'm just curious what happens. Now you might've heard the fan spin up and then spin down. And I'm wondering if this power supply has some built-in protection capabilities if the motherboard is not connected. Hard drive's not spinning up either. This is the other machine that was giving the sad Mac icon, so we know it was at least powering up correctly with the motherboard connected. I just wanna see what the behavior is when the motherboard's disconnected and to see if this thing stays powered up and runs this hard drive here. Let's go. Yeah, the hard drive is spinning and the machine hasn't powered down. So I'm very curious to see if the CRT is actually running with high voltage when the motherboard is connected. It probably isn't because the horizontal and vertical deflection, it's probably controlled from the signals from the motherboard. When the motherboard's not running, you're not getting deflection and without deflection, you're not gonna have high voltage. Let me turn this on. Yeah, we have no high voltage whatsoever without the motherboard connected. So I think I'm gonna try this Mac Classic 2 motherboard that I've already cleaned. I'm gonna plug this in here. I, I mean, I don't think this is gonna work. The caps haven't been changed, but perhaps this starts up enough and outputs a little bit of a video signal that it will power up the CRT. And I just want something that I can test to see if these things are even working. All right, motherboard is connected and it's precarious. Let's power this on. Of course, I don't expect to hear anything because there's audio caps are bad on this. Let's see if I see anything on the picture. 
No, there doesn't appear to be any picture. Let's see if there's any high voltage on here. There we go. We have about 11 and a half kilovolts, which is correct. So it seems like the circuitry that at least runs the CRT is generating high voltage. I still see no picture on here, but that's probably because this motherboard is bad. So if I power this off, I'm holding the button, the kilovolts have dropped right to zero. There's probably a self-discharge resistor thing going on on this board, but also it will discharge through this high voltage probe as well. So this is back to the machine that has the intermittent power supply. Let's turn this on. I don't have a hard drive hooked up, but let's just check the various rails here and see what we're getting voltage wise. 4.43 on what should be the five volts and 9.95 on what should be the 12 volt rail. I have a hard drive hooked up and I am looking at the five volt rail and let's see if we get anything. That doesn't even register anything. All right, hard drive hooked up and let's look at the five volt rail again. And we actually have nothing on the five volt rail. The 12 volt rail is gonna have something because the fan is spinning. 9.5 even less. So let's take this board out and inspect, see if we see anything wrong with it. All right, here's the classic power board removed. It's pretty easy, there's a couple screws. You do have to disconnect the high voltage anode cap and the neck board is soldered on and the everything else sort of unplugs and whatnot. Anyhow, I see the problem immediately. One or more of these caps has spilled its guts all over the board. This is the bottom of the board and there's all this brown gunk here that's sticky and disgusting. And even this voltage regulator here, screw, there's a bunch of corrosion on there. And I can just make out some corrosion on the edge of the speaker in there as well. So one or more of these caps here has blown itself and leaked everywhere. And I have a feeling it's this cap right here. Now there's no bulging on any of these. Maybe there's a tiny bit more on that cap, but it's very minimal, but I see a lot of gunk on the board underneath. Let's pull this white sheet off of here. To pull these little black things out, you just sort of lift up on them. And this is that brown gunk I was talking about. It's all along this bottom edge here. It's sticky and it's kind of wet. Now you might think this might be flux or something, but flux dries after a long time. This computer's from the 90s. Like up on these other areas of the board, there's brown stuff that's flux but it's crusty, but this, this stuff is more recent. So the first step is I'm gonna hit this with some IPA and try to clean up this side of the board a little bit and I'll suck out that capacitor. Some IPA, scrubbing with the toothbrush and then a little bit of water, clean this off pretty nicely. This is the cap I'm gonna be removing. I put the little red circle on it. Here's the capacitor that leaked. It's a Nichicon 2200 microfarad, 10 volts. And yeah, there's electrolyte just poured out of the bottom of this thing, yuck. Let's put a little fresh solder on this pad here. And then I will use some solder wick to remove it. Get this old crusty stuff off. Ugh, it's literally sticky on my fingers, gross. Look where I took the cap out. Check out all that gunk it left behind, gross. Time to go back to the sink and try to clean up this mess. And then I will find another capacitor in my spare parts and install that into there. And there we go, 2200 microfarad, 10 volt. I've replaced this cap. I found one on another power supply I had in my spare parts bin. The brand of this cap I put in here is Centaur, so it's the same <laughs> rating, but I have no idea if this is any good. So if I really wanted to preserve this, I'd switch this out with a new one and probably change these other caps. These brown caps are all exactly the same series as the one that failed. So since one failed, it's probably a good idea just to swap the other ones out. Okay, let's take a look. All right, moment of truth. Let's plug in this power cord and hit this power switch. I don't have the cover on this side, so I have to watch out not to touch that. Here we go. Come on. The hard drive is spinning up. Quick voltage test. Oh, uh-oh. Hard drive spun down. Okay, so maybe this thing is still screwed up. Let's take a look at the voltage rails. Oh yeah, we're still not getting great voltage. 4.2 volts on five volts. At least that's better than the zero we were getting. And we're still getting 9.3, so everything looks pretty low. Look how it's going up. That's weird. Oh. 
Yep, look, it's a bit all over the place, isn't it? So I switched this to AC and we're getting quite a lot of ripple here, about 500 milliamps on the 12 volt rail. Okay, so the ripple's all over the place. All right, so there are still faults on this machine, but it's probably those capacitors, probably other ones there that are on the output stage have probably gone bad, have high ESR and are causing these issues. I think I'm gonna take this power supply out of this chassis and mark this as needing repair. And I'm gonna put the one that was in that rusted out chassis into this machine, because this uh, thing didn't have the battery leakage. All right, so this is the board that had the crazy rust all over it. And it actually has cleaned up. Now I went ahead and removed all of the capacitors from the board and I tried to clean up the pads as much as I could. I ended up having to use a little bit of sandpaper to sand down and get the bad solder off of there so I could clean and apply some new stuff. Over in this area, these two are still on the board and those two were missing, but as you can see there, the pads are actually okay. The copper was still fine underneath there, which means I was able to tin it. Now the battery corrosion has resulted in all of these copper colored pins on these ICs. It's definitely eaten away at the tin plating on there and exposed the copper. And it also ate away at any of the solder that was used to connect these ICs to these traces here. So there's no longer continuity on any of these pins or these. And this chip right here, as you see, I can lift it up. It's pretty much desoldered. So I'm gonna use hot air to remove these four ICs here, and I'm gonna clean up as much as I can underneath and maybe try to resolder these back on here. See if I can make this board work again. Would that be a miracle? Well, that didn't really work so well. I ended up lifting some traces, making a bit of a mess of things. I don't have my normal hot air rework station. I'm using sort of a large heat gun, so it's not ideal. You can't be as directed with the heat. And I accidentally left the traces, but I don't think it really matters because once I got these chips off, I started toning out some of these traces in this massive corrosion area. And while a lot of the stuff is actually connected, which is rather amazing, there are broken traces and I would have to really carefully go through every single trace to make sure that it wasn't broken. And if it was, do a bodge. Not to mention these chips are in very rough shape. There's still a lot of corrosion on these. Probably could clean these up, I think. The amount of work that would be involved in getting this working is really not worth it to me, especially because this is just a Mac Classic. And I have two other Mac Classic boards that will be much easier to get working because the only corrosion on these comes from the capacitors and not the battery that leaked. So this board could be made to work with enough rework, but it's just something that's beyond what I am willing to do for something that is not special like this. Well, that's going to be it for part two of the Macintosh Repair-a-thon series. On the next part, I'm going to be recapping and repairing a motherboard. So if you like this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. But if you didn't, you know what to do. You can hit that thumbs down button. Hit that subscribe button to subscribe to my channel. It really helps. And hit that little bell icon, of course, if you want to be notified when I post new videos. Put your comments and your suggestions down in the comment section below. And that's going to be it. Stay healthy, stay safe, and thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.